Morning, church. Our scripture reading today is uh, Romans chapter 9, verses 19 through 24. Romans 9, 19 through 24. These are the words of God. You will then say to me, why does he still find fault? For who can resist his will? But who are you, O man, to answer back to God? Well, what is molded? Say to its molder, why have you made me like this? Has the potter no right over the clay to make out of the same lump one vessel for honorable use and another for dishonorable use? What if God, desiring to show his wrath and to make known his power, has endured with much patience vessels of wrath prepared for destruction? In order to make known the riches of his glory for vessels of mercy, which he has prepared beforehand for glory, even us whom he has called, not from the Jews only, but also from the Gentiles. Please be seated. <clears throat> so we come to the big question of our section here. Throughout chapter 9, Paul is refuting questions that the readers would have, and he shows them by the scriptures that the promise of salvation has always come by the sovereign will of God, and that it is by faith that we believe this. And so to this question, why does he still find fault? Who can resist his will? This is a question that no doubt many of us have asked as we have grown in our faith and understanding of the scriptures, which is why we should be extra gracious in how we explain it. <clears throat> but Paul's answer to this is quite bold. He says, who are you, O man, to answer back to God? Well, what does molded say to the molder? Why have you made me this way? In considering this bold response from Paul, it drew me to an idea found in scripture that's called uh, the creator-creature distinction and is found in the very first words of scripture. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God stands above and apart from his creation. He created all things from nothing. He is the almighty God and his word is law. There is no one and no thing greater than God that conditions him, he conditions everything else. This is part of what it means to say that God is sovereign. He is the ruler, he is the king, he is the creator, he is the final court of appeal. And that alone should frame our understanding of God's choice. But in all of his grace, he does not leave us there. Also in his sovereignty, he gives his son Christ. And in his sovereignty, the promise of salvation is extended to the Gentiles. And what Paul is getting at here is that the sovereign will of God does not limit the scope of salvation, but it extends it. And in God's sovereign plan, the promise is extended to all the nations through Christ. So church, lift up your hearts. 